Hi guys, and welcome to another Fast Panda Lockdown transmission. And this week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the Yujing, the State Empire. Um, and I have a Yujing army, and um, I don't know nearly enough about it. And uh, with me today is, as usual, Storm Shroud. Hi guys. And uh, he knows a lot more than me, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. Yujing, the other big power in the human sphere behind Pano, the perennial number two. It grows from China. So as China was rising to power and beginning to absorb the other nations around it, the Communist Party that ran China decided it needed to rebrand so so as not to alienate all the new people it was bringing in because people were being you know, colonized and, and brought into the nation tend to object if they feel they're losing their identity. So it changed everything. And by changing everything, it meant that everything effectively stayed the same. So what countries do, uh, were absorbed by uh, Yujing? So uh, Burma, Thailand, Japan, Korea, um, a lot of them, a lot of them because their economies were quite intrinsically linked to the US. And as the US fell, there was a void. So China moved in. Yeah, because Japan and China have never really got on through our history. We'll come to that in a little bit more detail in a bit. <laughs> Nice foreshadowing there, Claw. Um, so Yujing was, was born, the Jade Empire, the, this Far Eastern powerhouse. And one of the things it changed was it brought the emperor back. So it searched out the descendants of the Qing and Ming dynasties and refounded the emperor's house and the emperor as a, as a figurehead, as a, a focal point for, for all of Yujing to look to. Um, but so was so that he wasn't just an empty figurehead with, with no power. They made him um, the head of the judiciary system. So all law enforcement effectively runs through the emperor. Which also takes away the problem of all of the horrible, harsh punishments that the Yujing um, party wanted to hand out to people. It was not their fault. The emperor's in charge of it. Blame him. Yeah. Um, so it, with, with, one, with one quick decision, they, they give him power so he's not an empty uh, an empty figurehead at the same time they get rid of all the all the bad decisions that well they can't blame us for that it's not our fault anymore it's him uh, so the the iss faction is the imperial service that is the police force that the emperor controls which is why you get where you get the imperial agents the hsien the wu ming who are effectively penal troopers and he also controls resurrections so if you want to get your cube brought back you better be nice to the emperor. You know, but while we're on that, yeah, um, and I know the church do it in uh, Pano, as you said on the, in the last. The controlling of uh, resurrections isn't it just a case of paying somebody, or how how is it controlled? I, I never did quite understand that one. So sorry to get you throw, throw you. That's flow. quite all right. So resurrections are made possible by a, a, a compound called silk, the manufacture and production of which is. Um, a hack Islam specialty. So it's right. their, one of their big bargaining chips with the other nations. There's no resurrections if we stop selling you silk. Right. Um, and then control of who gets resurrected. Now in Pano, it is largely controlled by the church, but I'm sure large donations to the church don't hurt. No. Uh, um, I, I would like to live forever. Um, here's, here's some money just to put, put me in a good stead. Other things like military service obviously would also help. All, all the nations obviously use it as a as a tool in, in, in one regard or another to help control their population and encourage them to do things that they want them to do and not to do things that they don't want them to do. Mm. Uh, but the exact mechanics of how, how each nation does it uh, are going to be a little bit different in every case. So it's not a corporate thing where you just pay money? For some it is. I mean, the rich and the powerful will, uh, will be easier for them to get resurrected because they'll have enough money to make a generous donation. Mm. Um, but for, for any, for, it's a possibility for anybody in uh, Pano or, or Eugene who has a cube. It's, it's not going to be a possibility for the vast majority of people on Dawn, for the Ariadnans, because mm. they don't believe in that, their technology stuff. <laughs> believe in moonshine right sorry um the emperor he's in control of the military police and all that kind of stuff yeah. he's, in, he's in control of the police and the um who gets the 
okay to be upgraded uh, to be resurrected. Yes. Yeah. So Yuxing is still a communist nation. It, it's still lo- it's still run by the party, and there is this this sort of two pronged approach. There's the party, and there's the dragon, which is what they refer to the emperor as. Now the dragon is to a degree controlled by the party, but that's a, a tug of war that neither of them are willing to tug too hard on. Right. Okay. So. The Emperor, is he a um, recreation like Aleph does, or is he mm. uh, genetic ancestors of the dynasties? He's, he's described as the descendants of the Qing and Ming dynasties, and that they rotate them between the two, the terms. So the, the descendant of the Qing take, takes a term, then the descendant of the Ming takes a term. Ah, okay. So it's, it's not a position that lasts forever, because with cubes and people getting resurrected it would literally be a position that lasted forever yeah so the other so as we talked about last week with pano when pano took to the stars everybody else went you're wasting your money yu jing was no different yu jing thought it was absolute folly um for pano to do this that, that opinion quickly changed after the discovery of neo terra and yu jing spent a huge amount of resources to get up there and find planets of their own and they did. They, the first system they found had two habitable planets, which they called Shentang and Yutang. Um, and they became the, the center of the Yujing uh, state empire. One houses the new Forbidden Palace, which is described as being absolutely vast. Um, hundreds of square miles full of gardens and pavilions and all sorts of weird and wonderful clandestine judiciary stuff. Um, they didn't really find a lot of other planets, so they started contesting Pano claims. So, Svalharema. We'll have some of that. You don't need all of it. And then also with, with Paradiso, you don't need all of that either. Um, which is obviously the source of a, just, just a, a tiny amount of friction between Yu, Yu Jing and Pano. Um, so, Yu Jing haven't had it all their own way. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Japan uh, was one of the countries that Yuzhing absorbed as it expanded. Yes. And France never really liked China. Well, no. Well, Japan was only sort of brought into Yuzhing because its economy completely collapsed when Americas did. Because they were, they were so tied together that it was one person fell off the cliff, the other one was tied to them, they were going too. Yeah. Uh, and the Japanese government basically handed using the keys to the country without consulting anybody or basically just said, yeah, 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 have what you like, take it. And the Japanese people didn't particularly appreciate that and they resisted and they fought back. And it became a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. The more the Japanese people resented and fought back and resisted, the more the using Central Party thought of them as troublemakers and would deliberately put Japanese units on the front line to suffer horrendous casualties. So the more then the Japanese people felt like they were being treated like second-class citizens and responded accordingly and so on and so forth. So one of the more recent books from uh, Corvus Belli was Uprising, which talks about how Japan seceded from Yuzhing. With help, with help it has to be said. I mean, Pano weren't go- were, were no- definitely keen on weakening Yuzhing because it keeps them on top of the pile. So Japan seceded and took asteroids some colonies some cities chunks of uh, a couple of planets and, and formed the japanese secessionist uh, army and um, their own not whole planets but portions of planets obviously where there were large japanese lar- large elements of japanese um, citizenry they they, re- they rebelled and they held it and o12 recognized japan as its own independent com- uh, country again much to the uh, chagrin uh, of Eugene, because once O12 had recognised them, there's not a great deal they can do about it. So, not join anybody at the moment. Japan is a, a separate country at the moment, in its own right, and it, in infinity it is playable. It's under the non-aligned armies. Um, so, technology-wise, Eugene has access to pretty much all of the same toys as Pano, just not quite as good. Um, so I don't think there's any MSV3 in Yuzhing, but what Yuzhing has lots of that Pano doesn't have as much of is heavy infantry. Uh, Yuzhing 
uh, focused heavily on heavy infantry for, for their armed forces, um, which is reflected in the army lists. So there's nearly 20, I think it is, heavy infantry options in the using list in M3 at the moment, which is quite a few. Um, I think that's a nice point to segue on to how they play. So over to you as the person who's played more using at the two of us. Eugene. Um, I'm really enjoying playing them at the moment. Um, I left, I, I've sidelined my left uh, to build up my Yujing, and I just find myself adding to it uh, more and more and more. Um, get some nice armor, some multiple wounds, um, and having a fire team of invincibles. Um, I, look, I just love it a bit. Uh, tiger shoulders. Uh, things mm. dropping in. Um, Ninja uh, killer hackers. Um, it's just the thing is, when you've got so much heavy infantry, I'm always worried about um, my opponent's hackers. So I'll always try and put in some killer hackers. And the ninja killer hacker with ODD, just just love him, love her. Halfway up the field. So when my um, threat pieces are getting towards the middle. There's always that threat that there's going to be a killer hacker somewhere in the centre of the of the field, just to give me some protection. But the armour, the wounds, the, the uh, fire team movement uh, uh, bonuses you get, love them to bits. It doesn't hurt uh, that uh, ninja model is one of your favourite Infinity models of all time. It is. Um, but I've got to admit, after the uh, Karlstrom, the, there's a couple of the, the, the knight and the uh, infirmary are, are up there as well. So they're nipping at its heels, are they? Oh, yes. Um, it, it, the, the, the ninja with the bow, it, it's, still, it's still up there, but uh, I think she's losing a crown at the moment. Um, but yes, she's that ninja is lovely. Um, ninja killer hack with bow, stick her in the middle as a support to anything else that you push forward, because most of your army is going to be heavy. Um, that most of it's going to be at risk at, of hackers. Um, and when you've got somebody with lots of orders and lots of hackers, it can be a nightmare. I don't know what so you mean. When, yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> so when you're facing uh, a, a list of hackers land with uh, 20 orders and five of them ha uh, are hackers, it's, it's quite scary. Uh, other than you, that... You didn't even mention Gazi Mutuia. There's a reason for that. <laughs> uh, I, I, he's so cheap and so annoying um we're, we're getting off topic so oh, anyway yeah oh, yeah yeah we, we, you just you just draws up hatred all i saw is red um so are there any units in Yujing that are a bit different that you like so the one that springs to mind for me is the sujian the tran tran the transforming tran robot cat I don't often use them. If you, I, I, I very rarely use them because when I'm putting putting together a list, he is uh, expensive. Um, and how to use him, I've still never really got down to using him correctly or using him with my playstyle. Because Infinity for for me and you, you don't get that meta list. You have that list where you are comfortable using the units that you pick. And I've never been more. I've never really been comfortable with that um, transforming cat model's great. Model's lovely, which it, for it's me, def it's definitely a, the set of model you'd see on the shelf and go, "Ooh, what's that?" Yeah, um, but it's one of those things where I've never really used him uh, to its full to its full potential because it's just probably not my play style. Uh, I've used him a few times; doesn't do a great deal. Uh, perhaps my opponent just sees it and kills it. Uh, so maybe it should be used a few more times. Um, the ones I do like using um, are... I have a feeling the following words are going to be Yan and Ho. Yan Ho, that's the fella. So now you're bringing the patron on my side. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the Yan Ho's, the, the, the um, fire team duo uh, of... The hyper rapid magnetic cannon and the two missile uh, launches nearest the NX. But, um, those two together, they're great. But the fire team duo is the ones with the HMG 
and the missile launchers. Again, they're just phenomenal. You know, they're moving up, shooting, five armor, two wounds, ballistic still 14. It's always the, it's the twin missile launcher one that scares me with his, with his neurocinetics. He's a horrible ARO piece. You get him bunkered down somewhere and he's just a sod to dig out. Yeah, uh, in cover with, that, with five armor. He's just, it's, it's a tank. It's a walking tank. What about, what about in, options they have that aren't heavy, heavy infantry? Because we've said that they are largely heavy infantry. They do have a lot of good options that aren't heavy infantry. The one, one that always stands out for me, and it's very prevalent at the moment with Operation Kalstrom, is the Guilang. Uh, as a midfield skirmish, he's got camouflage, he's got infiltration. He, they all, all, every profile's got mines on it. There's a forward observer in there with a the combi rifle. There's the boarding shotgun. It's just a really nice little midfield piece um, that can, can be a real, a real game winner, even if he doesn't you know, murder the entire of the opponent's opposition army. Yeah, um, there's that. Um, there's also the Dao Fei, which I really like. Um, they can be nice options, the boarding shotguns. Um, Again, it can be a uh, hacker. You can have the lieutenant with a multi-rifle sat, sat right at the back. Uh, I think you'll yeah. mean the Dao Ying, not the Dao Fei. Dao Fei. Dao Fei is the guy with the cloaks and the camo and Caldstrom with the Spitfire. I was thinking, I'm looking at the Dao Fei. Are you? Okay. <laughs> I think you were talking about the Dao Ying with your hacker level two. Yep. The assault okay. hacking device, Dao Fei. Fair enough. They're, they're expensive. I was trying to get you off heavy infantry. That's the thing, and you got straight back to it. I can't. I can't keep you off them because <laughs> they're all <laughs> the Douying is quite nice, uh, but yeah, it's all it's all the heavy tiger soldiers. They're nice. Love a tiger soldier. Okay, that's not heavy infantry. That that's medium. That's okay. I got you <laughs> off there eventually. I'm allowed. I'm allowed. You're allowed to mention them. Yeah, you're allowed to mention them. Yeah, tiger soldiers. I, I, I love a tiger soldier. I love three. <laughs> I, I, I still feel three's too many, but I understand that you like them. Uh, especially now that you can kind of put them pretty much straight forward. They can um, go drop uh, onto objectives. They can go into that backfield. Um, probably not most people kind of protect all their uh, back back entries at, on round one. But when things start moving, gaps start opening up. So you can kind of normally drop in after about round two, uh, especially with the Spitfire or the boarding shotgun, uh, usually. Uh, hacker to drop on your objectives uh, in round three, but the other two are great. Um, I, I do like them. And when we talk about Pano, we talked about the, the recreation character that they have. We talked about Joan. So it seems appropriate we should probably mention Sunsei. Uh, uh, there's two variants of him in the using list. There's the, the marksman variant with the, either multi-rifle or multi-sniper, which I very rarely see. And there is the, the version I see more often. And the version that I honestly prefer um, with his boarding shotgun, a cracking lieutenant option. Get your bonus command token, and his willpower 17 and strategos level three. He's a, a bit of a beast. He's expensive, and again, he's heavy infantry. So I've done it now. I've gone back to the heavy infantry. It's so hard not to. It is, especially when there's things like moangs. Oh, you didn't even get. You didn't even talk about your <laughs> beloved moangs. I've not had him long. Uh, he's been on the table probably two, three times. That's enough. Um, he's, he needs he's rest. He should be retired. No, he should be retired now. He's had, he's had a couple of good outings. He, he should, he should call it quits while he's ahead. <laughs> he's it's not work. It's and, not working, and, is it? Uh, he's got meritism and two wounds with no, with no wounding cap. How could you not? <laughs> thirteen armor. Ah, he's, no, 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 no. Thirteen willpower. Five armor. If he had thirteen armor, that would be distinctly unfair. Oh, yeah, thirteen willpower. <laughs> Another you, thing that I say I see a lot in, in lists that I know you don't field are Quang Shi. Uh, these guys are, are really cheap little orders. Uh, the chain rifle ones are only five points, and they have a tendency to explode when they're unconscious. And they, but you do need a celestial, uh, celestial guard with a Quang Shi control device. But they're great if you want a little order battery for, for a few points. Uh, you know, and they're, they're extremely impetuous. They run across the board and get in the way, and then chain rifle things and then blow up so yeah they're, they're very popular i see them all in lists a lot for good reason yeah um, the only reason you don't use them is you don't own any 
that's most that is mainly the reason yeah um the uh bots that they've got that's uh we've got spitfire bots yaxi yaxi rushi and pain yeah at least everything's a pain i don't like any of it yeah i painted those uh at the start oh, of lockdown so they've not been used yeah i should never built those for you yeah. uh, <laughs> i'm looking forward i'm looking forward to using them um especially in in the mercenaries list Oh yeah, they they do work really well in a couple of the mercenary fight sectorials. Those ones. That Spitfire is dirt cheap as well. Twenty points for a Spitfire yeah, yeah. with MSV too. Cool, blimey. A note, as they say. Any other units that particularly stand out for you and the ones you like? If I was to pick one unit out of these, it would be um, probably the Ninja that I share with um, those renegade Japanese. Uh, I do love a Ninja. And, and just the name, Ninja Killer, Ninja Killer Hacker. What other game do you get Ninja Killer Hackers in? It's just, for me, that just sums up infinity. There are no ninjas. There was nobody here. <laughs> exactly. There are no ninjas. But Ninja the, Killer Hacker. That, the, that's the name of a, a ultimate unit for me. Ninja Killer yeah. Hacker. It's just brilliant. The one thing I've always thought with ninjas is they should have smoke grenades. Because for me, when, when I picture ninjas, I picture the using smoke to distract and disappear and the fact that they don't have smoke grenades yeah. just feels wrong i know they they've got to drop a smoke got, grenade and re-camo I, I know they've got to camo and and that's all and that's all well and good but yeah they, they need to be able to just you know smoke bomb things although they'd probably be more expensive if they if they, if they had that by quite a bit but uh, the new sculpts that have come out um loving some of the new stuff that's coming through now uh especially for the uh Kelstrom ones, uh, shotgun guy, Gulang. Yeah, the Gulang. He's he's just lovely. He is a nice little model. No, I've I've enjoyed painting up the Kelstrom using that I painted up. Um, I am wondering if they're going to do another box of Zanshi with the hoods and suppose another special weapons box with the hoods and the the party jackets, or whether I'm going to have to try and convert those onto the existing box because it would feel wrong having some Zanshi with the the fur lined parkas and some without. Yes, um, what I've, I've decided to do is I've, I'm going to do a similar base, not the same, but similar, um, and put a little bit of snow on it, just to, not just as a nod, it, but just a nod to winter, so it doesn't look too unusual when I filled it, with, uh, filled them with the rest of my uh, using. They're going to be the same basic colours. The coats are going to be like a, a bright blue, and the, the armour is going to be a jade green. Uh, so they're going to be this very similar. So hopefully they'll be. They won't stand out like a sore thumb, but uh, but they will be slightly different. Wow, I, I, I foresee a list in, your, in my future that has to face a lot of Zanshi. Because you'll have, what, ten? <laughs> I'll have orders, yay! <laughs> you'll have so many orders you won't know what to do with them. I know, I'm only used to them. Because <laughs> the, the Yujing is great, but they're expensive. If you go for all the heavy infantry toys, yeah, they can get very expensive very quickly. And most of it is heavy interest. Uh, heavy infantry. You can bulk it out with things like um, Zanshi and Quangshi. Um, Shaolin monks and things like that. But yeah. I mean, I have, faced, I have faced a couple of very scary sort of 17 order lists, although that could have been the person who was controlling them. I don't need to mention him. I should oh, I just tell you that I've never beaten him. I don't think I ever will, and you'll know who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I do. Bless <laughs> you. Okay, I think that about wraps it up. Oh, We've okay. witted on for long enough, I think. The poor listener is uh, probably asleep. So wake up! You can you can go about your life now. Anything? Any final comments you want to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. Apart from happy hobbying. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one. So, guys, here's what I've managed to get done in the last couple of weeks. A um, couple of the using models which you saw in last week's battle report, and uh, as you can see, I went on a bit of a combined army kick. Um, did my two Icadrons because they're always useful to have. I did the Cadmus with the Warding Shotgun that was ironically an advanced model I got. <laughs> it's been out for ages now, hasn't it? Um, the Shrouded because I wanted to replace my conversion. Uh, the Rashat because I think their background's fantastically funny. Uh, more at Diplomacy. If you haven't read it, I do recommend it. Very funny. Uh, I did the Mentor uh, in the middle over here with his Warding Shotgun. Nice little Lieutenant's option if you don't want to spend a lot of points on someone like uh, Sheshkin. And lastly, I did the two Caliban uh, Vampiric 
space newts. I mean, what's not like, what's not to like? As well as that, a few terrain projects I've been tinkering away with, which aren't finished yet. But you know, we're all gamers. We're all tinkering away with one project or another at the moment, aren't we? And we're always tinkering away with one project or another. Let's be fair. Um, and I've assembled 300 points of nomads for my next project to start working on. They are currently uh, drying from their undercoat at the moment. Advantage of Studio B being a building site, no shortage of places to do some spray uh, undercoating. Well, that's what I've been up to. I uh, should imagine the claw has got uh, lots of lovely stuff to show us as well. Okay, so what have I been doing in the last couple of weeks? I've not tidied my desk up. Mm. Okay, so just a quick zip through. Um, I've got some more TT Combat stuff for the Kalstrom uh, board, the winter board that I'm going to do. So this is going to go together for um, the winter board. I'm going to put snow on it, make it look wintry and have that winter board because I've not got one. I've always fancied one. So uh, that's for the uh, winter board. You saw the mat in the Diaphos battle report. So they're going to go in the mat. And on that particular terrain set, it's going to be a little bit of a mining thing. So I've discovered 3D printing. This is a 3D printed mining bot robot thing. Uh, I bought it from uh, a wobbly head uh, off eBay. He's on Facebook and things like that. And he's got a bit of a shop and uh, 3D print stuff. So check him out. Um, the quality, this is the first piece of 3D printed stuff I've got. Really impressed with it. Uh, it's a decent size, uh, it's one piece, um, 3D printers are fine, I wouldn't have it for a proper model, but for scenery, which this is, it's ideal, I'm, I'm really pleased, uh, it looks good painted up too, and to talk about painting, I've not painted any particular models, but I have been assembling, so I've got all the uh, using side of the Carlstrom box, and Joe, because I've never actually got around to I get picking up a Joe uh, for the tag, just in case, you never know. And that is such a badass model, really is an ace model. Um, the great pose is just full of character. Uh, I kind of like that one. So I've got those guys to paint. And um, yeah, I might tidy a bit of desk up, but don't hold your breath. Uh, oh, I have discovered uh, wet palettes. So that's what the, uh, and because I'm too tight to buy one, uh, a bit of kitchen towel under some grief boost paper in a small box. Bang on. Works for me. Right, and with that, I will uh, hand you back. Happy, happy hobbying. You know what, as, as a catchphrase to sign things off, I wish I could make, I could, wish I could actually put words together. Blah, 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 blah. See what I mean? Yeah.